This is Andy Perot for ID Boxing. We are here in Liverpool and I'm joined by trainer Angel Fernandez. Angel, a very short, simple night's work for Fraser Clark. Um, just talk to me about the fight for as brief and as limited an amount of time as you guys spent out there. I mean, yeah, it's just like the world is disappointing. You know, we, we, we're very disappointed. I mean, obviously we thought, you know, the guy for what we've seen, you know, it was going to give us at least, you know, three rounds, you know, a bit more work. But after the third shot, you know, that body shot, he just kind of like, he just didn't want to know. So all we have to say is just like, sorry to the fans, you know, that they pay all the money, you know, you know, just to, to come here and to watch the fight. Um, hopefully, you know, we're just going to go back to the gym, you know, see with the, with the guys, you know, with the team and see what's going to be next. How frustrating was it for you guys? Because I saw Fraser after the fight, like the disappointment just drop on his face when the guy just did not want to get back up, did not want to know any more of his fight. How frustrating was it for you guys as a team because you expected more from it? Obviously, obviously, yes. It's just like I mean, I know we we got the win, you know, but for us, it's just more kind of like what have we learned, you know? And as he said, you know, before in an interview, you know, like the learning has been done in the gym, uh, and we was hoping to do. Something, something tonight, but it just, it just didn't happen. What, what will be next when you look at potential opponents? Is somebody say like a Kamal Sokolowski, durable, has a, a record which is deceiving? Some fights in there which people feel he should have won and didn't get the decision. Would somebody like him be a good step up now for Fraser? Obviously, yes. You know, someone that is going to give him a bit more rounds. You know, a bit more trouble. You know, um, and then we're probably looking into kind of like you know the likes of Kevin Johnson and you know other fighters up there but as I said you know we have to sit down with the team see what's next and all I can say I mean after this is just apologize it's nothing else I can say I know you're saying apologize but the most important thing regardless is the win so you can look forwards now um, what will you say to Fraser to make sure that he doesn't become maybe a little disheartened himself but his opponent couldn't deliver more tonight Obviously, just like keep him, you know, motivating, you know, just like get back to the gym, you know, we just, he's going to be fighting again in, uh, in October. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the only thing that we have to look forward to. How active do you want him to be for the remainder of the year? Obviously, get one in October, see how he goes, you know, if he's injury free, maybe one more towards the end of the year. Um, and then, you know, we get to see how we are, you know, uh, at the start of the year. Angel, um, obviously... A couple of weeks ago, we saw another big heavyweight fight between Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. Decision didn't go in the favour of your man. Just take me back to that night. What are your reflections? The reflections is again, you know, like disappointing. You know, obviously we went back to the hotel. You know, after the fight, we watched the fight. Um, we definitely could have done a lot more things. You know, uh, in some of the rounds, um, obviously it was. A closer fight, you know, towards the end of the round nine, if the fight would have finished there, we would have won, you know. Uh, but we kind of like feel that, you know, we kind of like lost the fight on, on the last three rounds. But then middle rounds, you know, there, there, there were times where we could, you know, let the hands go a bit more, um, be a bit more aggressive. But listen, is is one of these things that we wish we could have changed it straight away, you know. Uh, all we have to do is just like look it back, reflect, and improve next time. There were critics of kind of the corner setup during and after the fight. For example, we saw Robert Garcia's comments that he had AJ free up after the first three rounds. Not many people saw it like that. How were you yourself scoring the fight? Obviously, I thought it was going to be like tighter. Um, we told him to go, you know, after that round nine, just got him. But I mean, what Usyk done on that 10 round is just absolutely, you know, hats off to him. You know, you have to give him the credit, you know, uh, to Usyk. And on the last round, I just like told AJ, listen, we, we, we got to win this round because I thought it was going to be, this is going to be close. Uh, maybe if we would have nicked the last round, you know, it might could have gone on our favour, but it just didn't. So. All we, all, all we have to do is just like look back at, you know, ramp around and like the things that we could have done better and just like adjust it on, on, on the next fight. Before the fight, the talk was that AJ had to be more aggressive heading into it. He, every, I think everybody will agree it was a better and improved performance on the first fight, but still just not enough. What was the initial game plan? What did you want Anthony to do back in Jeddah? 
obviously hurt the man, you know, run by run, you know, get three, four punches, solid punches on him, you know, slow him down and then got him maybe kind of like in the middle rounds, you know, round six, round seven, you know, just like start stepping on him, going to the body as he was going. But again, you know, like Usyk is, 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 is a very tricky opponent, you know, he's constantly moving. Uh, in reality, it's, it's a bridge way. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about stamina and things like that. I think with that performance, say, you would be a lot of heavyweights on that on that on that night. Uh, and if you would have seen like the previous fight, you know, uh, Hergovic against Sun, you know, by the round three, round four, them guys that were hugging each other. So I think AJ fought kind of like a very high-paced fight till the ninth, and he gave that complete effort, you know, on uh, on the round nine, and he pretty much round 10 he just like didn't have anything you know the critics again they might say like oh he should have done this he should have done that please do trust me the best rounds in sparring always was round 9 round 10 round 11 and round 12 and the worst rounds on that fight was them rounds so what did you make of the people who picked up on kind of Anthony Joshua's stamina and Deontay Wilder himself said that he just saw him blowing out in that fight what do you make of those critics I don't think it's, 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 you know, it's stamina, what he lacks of. I mean, people don't realise that Usyk reality is a cruiserweight. That, that, the tempo between the rounds is actually like a cruiserweight, cruiserweight fight. It's not really a heavyweight. As I said, like, you know, if you watch the previous fight, the heavyweights, by round four, them guys, they were hugging each other. They weren't even throwing ones and twos, you know. So I think any heavyweight on that night, would lose against uh, against Anthony. Uh, it's not it's not kind of like a thing of like stamina itself. So, on the critics and criticism point of view, I'm sure you've seen it yourself. There's been people who have criticised yourself and um, Robert Garcia and the corner work. What have you made of people who have questioned you and your position in that team? <laughs> Obviously. Honestly, I don't. I don't even watch the critics. You know what people says, what people doesn't say. So if you kind of like maybe ask me a specific of what they say, I can give you my my answer. Right. So somebody I spoke to yesterday, Paul Smith Jr., said that he just doesn't understand your role and involvement in that team because if you've got somebody as experienced as what Robert Garcia is, who's achieved so much in boxing, he should be the number one voice for man who AJ should be listening to, regardless and kind of the lead man in the corner. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem, you know, to uh, to 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 do that, you know. Um, AJ had the foot belief in myself. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's myself, if it's, if it's Robert Garcia, you know. The idea is the same from day one, you know. It was very clear of what we needed to do. Uh, in between the rounds in the sparring, Garcia was talking, then I was talking. It's not kind of like an ego thing. I don't have that ego, you know. I said, listen, if you want Garcia to give the instructions, he gives the instructions, which he, which he was doing as well during the fight. Just remember, like, the, the actually one-man boys, it doesn't really matter as long as in them three minutes, you know, there is conversation and there is communication between myself and Garcia. And that's what was happening, you know, what we need here, what we need there. And, you know, it was me giving instructions. So how did you find that dynamic on fight night between yourself and Robert? It was very good, very good, very good. All throughout the camp as well. So to lead on, obviously, Robert Garcia, I'm sure you've seen his comments that he feels that to get the best out of AJ, he needs to travel out to spend time with him in his camp in America. Is that something you agree with? Yeah, of course. I mean, Anthony needs to see that for, he, for himself, you know, see if he likes it. You know, at, at the end of the day, I, I'm not going to be the one just tell and hold Anthony back. You know, he needs to do what uh, is best for him. You know, uh, if moving to America and train with, with other guys, you know, is going to make him better, off you go, you know, 100%. I will, I will fully support him. Has he spoken to you at all since before in terms of what he wants to do next? Obviously, no, in terms of what he wants to do next, you know, we, we, we have a good conversation, you know, um, a few days ago uh, about what happened, you know, things like that. But, listen, it's just rebuild the man, you know, bring that confidence back in him. And uh, I'm sure he will become three times heavyweight champion of the world. For as much as people may be critical of AJ's performance on the night, despite it being better than what it was in the first fight, how much credit does he deserve for what he's achieved in the sport? Because it's something which I've seen people start to kind of point out. He's achieved a great deal for someone who turned over and started boxing at such a late age. 
Obviously, the man deserves a lot of credit to himself, you know. Everyone, like, all the pundits, you know, all the fans, you know, talking how great Usyk is, pound, pound for pound. And you have a guy that started boxing, let's say, from four years old, five years old, to someone that started boxing at 18, 20. Um, he went in reality a 50-50 fight. It was a very, very competitive fight. So boxing is about time. You know, and you're not going to learn things in, in a camp or you're not going to make major improvements in a camp. That comes on a day to day, you know, month after month, year after year. And, you know, I think people should, should respect the man, you know, a lot more. Obviously, there's a lot of talk after the fight about the post fight speech. Angel, what did you make of Anthony leaving and then coming back? Obviously, I'm not really the one to kind of like tell him off. Unfortunately, you know, the whole emotions, you know, come out of himself. Uh, he really wanted that win, you know, he badly wanted that win. And he just come out on that particular moment, you know. We have never seen him before like that. So, you know, a lot of people said, oh, people should, you know, take the microphone away from him, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but when you haven't seen that reaction in him ever, you know, who is the first person that is going to do that? So... Uh, Maybe it was not the best time, you know, it was Usyk's time, you know. Um, but listen, that's gone, you know, just like, let's move on because, you know, people keep on, you know, just like going on and on and on about what he does good, what he does bad, or he does this, he does that. Just just give the guy, you know, like a bit, a bit of time, you know, just like to reset himself. And him being a champion, him not being a champion, eyes are on him. So... It is what it is at the end of the day. People will talk about kind of Anthony's mental state before and then after the fight. What do you make of it? Do you think like he needs a break now to really reset and recharge? Eddie Hearn said he wants him to fight in December and then three times next year. Do you agree with that? Do you think that would be good for him to be active or do you think he needs maybe, say, four to six months off before going again next year? No, I, I don't think so, you know. Um, he, he obviously is very disappointed, he's sad, you know, because at the end of the day he's a lost. Um, but he wants to go out in, in, in December again. You know, the team wants him to go out again in December, you know, because he feels like he, he could have done better. Um, and honestly, he kind of like, he just feels released as well. He's probably the best in terms of like mentally that I have seen him after the, after the loss. So I think we should definitely go straight out and let's see what's happening at the end of the, at the, end of the year. I saw a comment from yourself from another interview where you said if they were to fight a third time, Anthony would win. You 100% believe that it would that would be the case if I did? Of course. I mean, compared to the first time, you know, second time, uh, I think he started to become a lot more comfortable, you know, like fighting a uh, south post, you know, what Usyk brings. He started to understand him, you know, defensively was much better. Um, he kind of like took a lot of the shots that he was taking in the first fight, he was not taking them shots in the, in the second fight. So it was a lot of work on, on defence and like people think that sometimes as coaches we, we create magic and we not create magic, it's, you know, it's a lot of work behind and I do believe and he knows that himself as well that if you watch the fight again he could have done a bit more and that bit more I think he would have given us the win. How much do you feel you learnt personally as a trainer on the night? Say that again. How much do you feel you personally learned on the night as a trainer? Oh my God, I learned a lot. I learned a lot just throughout the camp, you know. Um, again, you know, I just have to say thank you to him, you know, just to Garcia, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, his new experiences. I could be 20, 30 years in boxing and I could go through new experiences, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, boxing is about knowledge. So I'll just leave it there. We will leave it there now because I'm sure I'm, we're sat in the showers and Fraser needs to have a shower and get off. But listen, Angel, I appreciate this interview. Thank you for speaking to me in ID Boxing. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you, mate. Thank you.